Hey guys, it's Friday, March 2nd. We haven't done one in a while, we've been really, really swamped. We, you might have seen we finished the six that we were doing and got it out the door. Um, delivered it to Dallas, to the Haas Gallery. We've been a little bit swamped. There's Chelsea. Hey Chelsea. <laughs> Chelsea's leaving. Bye. <laughs> She's our website uh, guru. Um, and it's shop cleanup. So we're in the middle of a cleanup, but we wanted to at least have some level of wrap up for the week. Um, I've got some questions. Let's kind of walk around a little bit. Can we do that? Um, Steve Epi says, what was the building before you moved in? This was a crappy warehouse. This actually one area here that we're standing in was a commercial kitchen and a really bad one with rats and roaches and the most disgusting thing you've ever seen where they made falafels and it was really, really nasty. Stefan and I spent three months in here doing this uh, by ourselves and it was terrible, really, really bad. Put air conditioning in and put lighting in and made it a nicer space. And then like that was this space and then this space was uh, um, just an open space with no air conditioning, no lighting as well. It was just the dark hole where artists were doing painting or something. This was like, some guys were doing, this is Bay 3, they were doing some, man, what, what the hell were they doing in here? I don't, they were doing Airstream restorations, and there was like five people living in here, which no one lives here now, um, and so we had to rebuild it all. It was a giant fire hazard. We put in like a, we put in a real like bathroom and shower, just in case we like ride your bike to work and all that. We, um, we put in a full kitchen over here which we're about to have to expand because too many people work here now and it's just entirely too small. Yeah, uh, Tim. Tim, say hello. How's it going? Okay. And then, again, we air conditioned this space and put in an upper deck. That's where engineering is up there, the storage closet. Um, uh, media was up there until this morning. Well, they've moved to a new area over here. We'll show you kind of what's happening. And bay four was like this guy's personal workshop. Hey, hang on. And he's always making noise. This was this guy's personal workshop where he like built bicycles and stuff. We took this over and we put in a whole other up deck, upper deck and a dirty room and place for Andy to look at me mad. Uh, and then this was, man, I don't even wanna talk about what was in here, but we built this upper deck in here ourselves. Uh, and then these guys that we recruited to be in here did some of this skin work, but they'd never really finished it. It was a bunch of crappy work. We put these stairs in a couple days. So this is Bay 5, this is our newest acquisition. I think we talked about this already. <sighs> and it's still coming together. It looks nicer. Um, it was really nothing. There was nothing going on here. It was mostly storage. So let's see, what else? What were the other questions? Um, Xavier asks, advice for getting into a business like this? Oh man, jeez. Work real hard, don't compromise on your vision, and fake it till you make it, I don't know. Work really, really, really hard, and um, tell everyone what you want. If you don't tell everybody what you want, you're not gonna get it, I promise. Um, Claiborne Lord says, what is the reliability like on a Moto Guzzi? Um, man, hang on, let me turn this fan off. What is the reliability like on a Moto Guzzi? They're, they're uh, in vintage bikes, in my opinion, there's a Moto Guzzi, it's a Le Mans that we have, and a V11 Moto Guzzi, and uh, God, there's Guzzi's everywhere right now. In the vintage world, second only to BMW. They're actually quite reliable. They're really strong bikes. Um, James Wright asks about Wrench Against the Machine season two. Um, <laughs> no, there's not gonna be a season two. I did season one of that, I was a judge on that show. It was a fun show. It was the only bike show I know of that was actually real. Three days, three guys, 3,000 bucks. It was not fake. It was the wrong network, maybe the Esquire network, but you can watch it on Amazon. Maybe they'll bring it back onto the network, I don't know. But uh, I actually had lunch with the director of that the other day and he was still, still bummed because it was really, it was a real show. Bruce Kirk says, who's Morrissey? Google that. That's worth Googling, who's Morrissey. Oh, I can't believe you don't know who Morrissey is. Well, anyway, it's fine. I'm a big fan of Morrissey, even though I wear that shirt. He's like the crooning god of 80s rock, really. Anyway, um, we've got a busy week planned, a busy weekend planned. Uh, most of us are gonna work this weekend. That's how it goes, but we've had the shop clean. 
Uh, comment, like, subscribe, um, follow, share, tell us what you want to know. I ask more questions. We'll see you guys next week. Have a good one. Bye.